Well, from this moisture tester, I think the corn is ready to rock and roll. I did some sampling and it seems like it's good to go. It's not too wet out too, as far as like the ground getting stuck with the combine. I think we're good to that. We're good to go there, but the corn is ready to go. Whew, this has been, this has been forever, man. It seems like we've been testing corn every day, hoping it's ready to go. I thought for sure this morning it'd be ready to go because right now it's almost close to four in the afternoon and corn is finally ready to go. I, I like, I was about to go this morning, but I was like, okay, let's dry it a little more. Even though we have a weapon where we can dry it down. We, I, I just want to get a little drier. We have time, hopefully. But before we get to it, let me give you guys a rundown on what's happening and how hard harvest has gone so far and what fields we have left to harvest because some of you guys may not know exactly we we'll just hop on this apex gaming pc okay so here's the ground we own here's the home farm farm here's the i think it's close to 100 acres back here and then we own field eight which was the wheat field we harvested field 11 is corn that here this will give a better idea field 11 is the field i think i'm gonna harvest right now <laughs> but this is a cornfield this is a cornfield and also field seven we own is a cornfield there's a lot of grain that's gonna be hauled off between these three fields and today it's only me so we're not gonna get much done unfortunately and then we also own this field right here which i call it the no name no number field uh, that we did beans on if you guys remember and I think I still have my header there. Yes, my header is still there. So um, there's, it's mainly corn the rest of the way. Yeah, it's pretty much corn the rest of the way is what we got here. Field 10, field 11, and field seven. Um, and then hopefully we can get it done by winter. It's There's a lot to harvest. Honestly, at some point, I'm gonna wanna get two combines. Guys, don't let me get two combines, okay? I'm serious, we have the money for it, but I just, I'm, I'm gonna want to. I know I'm gonna wanna get another combine. By the way, I appreciate the support on the video so much. It's been awesome, especially the role play. This I love role play when we have other people, but unfortunately today it's only gonna be me. I gotta be, you're stuck with just me. Yeah, I'm that lazy driving the razor down the driveway. But dude, you gotta get that thing out sometimes, dude. That thing was pretty dusty. So uh, we have the 7310R. By the way, I always call this a 7200R, and I apologize. 7310R. Um, I don't know for I don't know why I have it in my head. Uh, 7200 R the whole time. But what we gotta do is unhook the bat wing from it and then hook this back up to the gravity wagons. So since it's just me, I think what I'm gonna do is run the 9670 combine and then unload directly into the gravity wagons. I feel like there's really no point to run a crank. Even though, dude, I really wanna run a grain cart today. We don't have another person to help out, unfortunately. So we won't even, we probably won't even get the, maybe we'll get the, yeah, may, okay. Maybe we'll get the grain cart out today. I got to figure out how I got to do this. Since there's only me, it's going to kind of suck. But let's at least get the, all the equipment hooked up and ready to go for maybe tomorrow when I think Austin's going to be here tomorrow. And I might ask Jake to help out tomorrow too. It'd be perfect. Okay, so for now, the bat wings. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. That's not good. We almost took out the shed. For now, the bat wings going to be put in there. Now, I guess I didn't even see a comment on my last video, but I said my camper was gone. And I haven't even seen a comment where it went because I have no idea where that camper went. Like, I don't know if my memory is just wiped or if like, you know, I just, I have no idea where my camper went. I seriously don't know if like somebody stole it or what. Like, I'm, I'm not messing with you guys either. Like, I'm not trying to like qu quiz you guys. I have no idea where the camper went, like legit. So what we're going to do is connect the 7R to our Brent gravity wagons down here. The red ones, of course. Now the 8130 is connected to the green ones. Uh, and these are going to be basically our grain trains right here. I'd like to connect all four, that'd be perfect, but that's that's pretty darn unrealistic. Now I want to give a shout out to Mappers Paradise because they've been working, in case you guys don't know, you guys probably know, but they've been working on uh, Minnesota Millennial Farmers map. <laughs> and uh, and so if you guys want, go check out their Facebook page, especially if you're on there. And once you're on there, you gotta you gotta give them a like on their Facebook page. But if you want to see photos of like updates of how the map's actually coming along, they have some photos of like the sheds they've been working on. They're trying to get it they're trying to get it like one for one to where like everything like exactly I guess I guess one to one means like basically exactly what he has in real life but anyways I'll link that down below if you guys want go check out mappers paradise page you guys can see updates on how Minnesota Millennial farmers map is coming along okay so next is the 8130 I'm just gonna pull it up behind the 7r there we'll get these ready to go I don't know if I'm gonna take these out to the field yet or not I gotta kind of figure that out Okay, there we go. That is all lined up. Okay, so the 9670, there's going to be an argument. If people really know their equipment really well, there's going to be an argument. that The 9670 can't run, here I'm going to fire up quick, but the 9670 can't run a 12 row corn header. And I kind of agree. So right now, we're going to run a 12 row corn header. I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it to like extreme limits. 
it'd be nice to it'd, it'd be nice to upgrade the horsepower run a little tuner on her but i think what we got we ought to do is upgrade our combine i'm serious i'm dead serious like trade this thing in i'm gonna run it on 12 row corn header for today but this thing is just it doesn't have enough power a 9670 at max I, especially i've looked on youtube just to kind of give an idea of what people run and everybody's run like an eight row corn header very few people are running a 12 row corn header on a 9670 which means we should probably upgrade and it's probably not that realistic but we're gonna see how it goes for today what's nice is <laughs> the field we're harvesting is right across the street so you know when i'm bringing equipment i can just go for a little jog just back to the back to the shop and there's our equipment okay so i'm gonna leave that running and we're gonna get harvesting actually i should probably run through the field to make sure just make sure the moisture's fine and last but not least the beast the 8970. I don't, okay, I'm just going to be completely honest here. Uh, okay, I'm going to tell you guys. The 8970 doesn't have a PTO. So the PTO is sitting here completely. It sucks. And I don't know if the 8970 in real life ever has a PTO or just some of the tractors. Some of the 8970s don't have PTO. Some do. But right now, it's going to be on our grain cart. And it'll run the grain cart. But it's, it's kind of unrealistic, obviously. Because the PTO... I don't know. What, tell me what you guys want me to do. If the eighty nine seventy is a perfect tractor for this, if it had a green, if it had a PTO, um, I don't know if I should be running or not. For today, we're gonna run the tractor still, even though it doesn't have PTO. Just imagine as a PTO. Man, this would be the perfect setup if it had a PTO. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna have the eighty nine seventy here, and basically we'll almost make it like a holding tank. I think is what I'll do. I'll just use this to unload in and then maybe run the grain back to the farm. Yeah, into the gravity wagons or something like that. I gotta figure that out. But for now, the day has come. The day has come. We can finally harvest corn. It's crazy. And there we go. See, I'm really curious to see what our yield monitor is going to show for a yield on this corn. This will be interesting. Uh, looks like we're on 185 bushels to the acre, which honestly isn't that good. I was expecting a lot better yield out of this corn, if that's the case. Who knows though? Oh man, this is gonna be this is gonna be a long fall, especially with corn, because we have we have a lot of corn to get harvest, harvested. If you guys are wondering why there's a truck up there, that's actually Austin Farmer's uh, truck that broke down. He got a little ways down the road in the Cummins, man. He was just gone. Actually, the transmission went out on the truck, so he's been that's been sitting there. He should probably turn off his hazards. I was gonna drain that battery, but that's been sitting there for over a day. That truck. I don't know what his plan is with that, but that thing is. Uh, Transmission is toast on that thing. It's fried. This 9670 seems to be struggling a little bit. We're running, we're pushing max RPM, of course. But this thing is struggling, especially when we're climbing up a hill, too. The corn is, isn't yielding. It's not insane, the yield coming out of it, but it's still struggling with a 12 row corn header. So I think what we're going to have to do is upgrade combines, guys. Could be next video. Uh, it could be next week. Who knows when we're going to upgrade, but I, we need to get this thing. I feel <laughs> this is hard on this combine. So this seems like it's going to work out good. So I'm just going to finish this off right here. And then back up. That looks really realistic right now. Of course it is. It's real life. It's a vlog, right? <laughs> this has got to be my thumbnail. This is really sweet right here. I don't know why. But what's nice is I'm going to get full here, like really close to full. And I can just pull the grain cart just right on the side here. And we can unload. I, I'm not going to make it all the way back to the grain cart. But we might make it somewhat close here. Okay, so what I got to do, shut the combine off. And then sprint for a little jog over to the uh, A970. Now also, at Walmart, I saw they had a, a squad flag. I was thinking about putting a squad flag on our flagpole right there. We'd have four flags, but it'd be kind of cool to have a, a squad flag on there. Big old 8970. I'll pull her underneath, and then we'll unload and uh, keep on going here. And then this cornfield over here to the right is what we have to harvest also. This is, uh, this is my other field. I forgot how many acres it is. It's pushing a little under... A little under 800 or eight, a little under 100 sorry 800 would be insane uh but that's gonna be that's gonna be a challenge too if i was by myself and there we go we're unloading Should probably jump in the combine actually never mind there's no way we're overfilling this thing man this is actually gonna be nice so our combine holds about four to five iron bushels and then this holds 1500 bushels so we should be able to get three full combine loads in here before it's uh before it's full he's like gold boys Blowing gold in the tank. So I'm going to shut the 8970 off and hopefully we make it somewhat close to here. I don't think we will. I think we'll probably be done there. If I do another headland around here, we'll probably stop right there. But so I think what I'm going to do is open up the end. So here's one end and then obviously the other end will be down by those five big oak trees down there. So I'll do one more pass down this way and we should have enough room to turn around 
Uh, and then this, and this will allow us to just go back and forth, and I'll cut a straight row so we have a perfectly straight row. So it's pretty easy. Uh, it's pretty easy to run the combine here. Or maybe this this end might be straight here. I know the other end was definitely curvy. Since uh, no, it's a little off. Yeah, this is an issue though. We can't be run. Uh, it's it's struggling a little bit. This uh, a lot of bit. This 9670 is struggling. Oh shoot, we're off a little bit. I'm struggling a little too. Holy crap. So I have about 300 bushels in, and I just kind of basically what I did there is I just straightened out. Oh shoot, I can't see behind me. Um, I kind of just tried to straighten out this row here so that I have a straight path here. Because it was kind of curvy, so I kind of cut out the curves of this, and then we'll go straight back and forth. Uh, and this should this field should be fairly simple to harvest. But what I'm going to do here is unfold the pipe. We're going to put the pipe out, auger, pipe, whatever you want to call it. I know Farm Sim calls it pipe, uh, but I don't know. Auger is probably a better term for it. Tell you what, it is nice having a giant grain cart here. Now, I think a, some company makes like a mother bin. And it's uh, it's like a bin you pull behind. It's not really a grain cart. It's it's like just, I think it's called a mother bin. It's basically a bin, it's, it's basically a giant grain cart that sits out in the field. And I think it has hydraulics that will take all the pressure off the tires. And you just put it on the edge of the field. And I'm pretty sure it has an auger on it too. And so it's just basically this huge holding bin out in your middle of the field that you can pull with your tractor out there. It's not really, I don't think it's supposed to be meant, it's supposed to be a grain cart, but it's just supposed to be a giant holding bin, which is kind of cool. It's interesting. It's an interesting concept. So I'm going to run down to this end with uh, the five trees here, and I'm going to go back and forth, probably two passes here, so that way we have room to turn around, and we should be good going, uh, running east to west, or is that, yeah, east to west here. Going downhill, man, this 9670 is a monster, but when we're going uphill, we seem to be struggling uh, with this, <laughs> especially when you got 12 row cornet on. Obviously, that's taking almost all of our power. It looks like down here, we're getting 194 bushels to the acre. I think kind of when we started, we were only getting 183 or 185 bushels to the acre. This seems to yield a little better down here. I don't know if it's the soils or what, or if it's just strictly compaction back here by the previous farmer. But this area is yielding a lot better. Again, we're stuck at about 81 bushels. or Sorry, not 81 bushels. 81% uh, full, around 300 bushels. And I don't think I can make it to the end. That's why we're unloading again right now. Speaking of holding bin, man, this grain cart is like a holding bin. Let's see what we're at for grain levels. Yeah, we got a we got a lot more room to go yet. This is going to be nice. And especially, say we upgrade to a bigger combine, that's going to have a bigger holding capacity, which will allow us to hold, which will actually fill up the grain cart a lot more faster. Um, but I still think we'll be able to fit three full combine loads in the grain cart before the, before the grain cart gets full. We're full. 362 bushels the first time I think we've had a, actually you know what the first load we had was pretty close to full but it feels like when I drive the combine it feels like there's actually a heavy load in the front now I'm I don't know what it is I wonder if you could look at the tires and kind of see that from the tire almost like the tire pressure if some of them are a little flatter than the rear it it's tough to tell but it feels like when I'm driving it it does feel a little heavier now I, I'm trying to think would that have an effect on the combine 400 bushels, 400 times 50 is what? How many pounds? Like 20,000 pounds? I think, yeah, yeah, that'd be 20,000 pounds. So that's kind of some weight, but it probably... I wonder if you'd be able to feel it as a combine operator, though. Feel the weight. She is getting close to full here. I'm going to try to fill up the front, and then I'll work my way to the back here. So, so far, I'd say we got probably a third of the field complete. Maybe a tad more than a third. Yeah, probably a tad more than a third, especially with the headlands. Now down here, it's yielding uh, basically 193 bushels. It's it's tough because there's probably a... I, I wonder how accurate this yield monitor is. Because there's probably a margin of error of like a little under 5%, I would guess, on these yield monitors. So, I mean, technically, you can't tell that this end is better than this end. It's pretty darn close throughout the whole field. This is where it'd be nice to have some help, because right now it's just smooth sailing. Our only issue is, is that I don't have help. If I had a grain cart here, this would be really simple. Or if I had a helper to run the grain cart, somebody would run up next to me. And then, hey, you know what? This is where I need an autonomous grain cart. Smart egg. The CEO came in and presented to one of my entrepreneurship classes, I think like a year ago or so. And, uh, and pitched us the... Uh, 
and he pitches the autonomous grain cart, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool idea. Uh, he created Smart Ag, which is a company that has the autonomous grain cart. I don't know if you guys have seen a YouTube video of it. It's pretty darn cool. And then also, uh, they have also, I think he created, it's Colin Hurd is the CEO's name, but he created Ag, it might have been Ag Vision. I forgot what company it was. It was a different name. It wasn't Smart Ag. Are we full? We are full. Darn it. I need to quit talking so much. So what I got to do, shut off the combine, fire up the 8970. Yeah, there's a lot of weight. These tires are, yeah, tires are squatting a little bit. Yeah, you can tell there's some weight behind there. So we're going to run the 8970 back to the gravity wagons. Now, I got to decide if we're going to run this corn to town. I got to see what prices are. Let me pull up my iPad. So it looks like corn, if there's, ooh, so bi the biodiesel plant, which isn't surprising, biodiesel plant actually has the highest price right now. So we could run some corn over there. Price per bushel, this isn't the best. It's crazy that wheat, this is kind of weird, guys. It's crazy that wheat has a higher price per bushel than corn does. That's just, in, that's a little off there. Or I guess, you know what, now that I think of it, what is wheat per bushel is probably pretty similar to corn. Now, I've never been around wheat like wheat areas a lot so i honestly don't know what the price per bushel of wheat is but now that i think about it more wheat doesn't yield that much so the price per bushel of wheat and i guess it obviously depends on a lot of other factors but i think the price per bushel for wheat maybe is more than corn yeah i'm not sure on that one i guess i can't say i can't make fun of that because yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm i'm not sure so we have 1500 bushels of corn here now either way whether we I gotta figure out how to do this the best. See, what would be really nice is to just unload into one gravity wagon that's just loading directly into the bins. But it's not, I need to like, I need to set up some, some type of, you know what? Maybe what I could do is set up like an auger. Think about this, an auger that goes, I don't know if this would work. Yeah, this would probably be my best bet for now is to buy an auger that let's say goes right through here and the auger, all the auger does is unload straight into the pit here. Yeah have an auger right here and then I just pull my grain car right through uh, and then have a gravity wagon sitting right here I'm loading the gravity wagon gravity wagons automatically jumping into the auger which the auger dumps into the pit unless maybe I'm not sure if this is true on this grain cart but the grain cart may have a emptying mechanism on the bottom of the grain cart I mean that's usually not how you empty a grain cart but it may have something like that down there I don't know I don't think it's meant to be used like that even if it were So for now, what we'll do is we'll just fill these gravity wagons. This whole grain cart is going to pretty much fill both of these gravity wagons. Oh yeah, boys. 8970s keep <laughs> keeping up, man, with that PTO, you know? Spin oh, dude, the PTO is spinning back there. What the heck is that? <laughs> That's so funny that the PTO is actually spinning back there. So we do have a PTO, guys. We do have a PTO on the 8970. I guess you could say, even though you don't see it, it's there because it's definitely spinning. The PTO right there. And that cart looks to be full. So we'll back up and fill the other one. I definitely should have filled the... Yeah, I definitely should have filled the first one first. And she's a filling. That's a lot of grain coming out at once. Dude, you can see the gravity... You can actually see the gravity wagon, like, kind of moving. Like, you can see it filling up with weight. I don't know if it's the tires, like, kind of sinking down a little bit. Or if the gravity wagon's, like, trying to get away almost. But it's, like, it's kind of, like, almost trying to push the tractor, the 7R up there. It's trying to push, like, the 7R forward a little bit, it seems like. Okay. Those are full, so we'll head back out to the field with 8970. What's nice is I got this entrance down here that makes that allows me not to have to like kind of maneuver my way around the farm. Oh, actually, you know what? We have 9% left. I better back this puppy up and we better unload in those other gravity wagons. There we go. Now she's officially empty. So we're going to head out to the field again. We'll keep harvesting some corn. So I guess the question that I have for you guys is what combine do we go with? Seriously, put it down in the comment section. I have $330,000. Obviously, I don't want to blow all of our money on a brand new combine, but we need something that has a lot of power. Uh, you know what would be cool is run a 16-row corn header. I'm not going to do it because it's just like you don't see that many people run a 16-row corn header. It would be really nice to run a 16-row corn header. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm thinking uh, just a bigger model STS. So we could go 9770 or we could go like a, a 9870, 9850, 9860, something somewhere in there or or we could go up to the s series so like a s 680 or s 690 or maybe a 700 s 780 something like that but the, once you get to the 600 700 those are going to get expensive though that's the only thing i'm not going to get that good of trading value for this 9650 
So I'm gonna unload the last 200 bushels in here, and we'll head back out to the field. Uh, but so far, what we probably got about probably got about 20, 30 acres knocked out. For one guy, it's kind of good for one guy getting that much done so far. But anyways, guys, I just want to say this is gonna be the end of the video. Now I know this was a, a little shorter episode, and to be honest, I am really behind right now. I had a ton of school. Uh, there's no there's no excuses, no excuses at all, seriously. But uh, like literally. This is getting posted right after I get done recording this. And I just want to I want to be honest with you guys. I want to let you guys know. So this is a lot shorter video coming out. And I'm going to be late on the release time. Because usually I always like to post at 3. Just wanted to keep you guys updated. But seriously guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And hey, I'll see you next time. Where we should be going a lot faster with Harvest. And hopefully we have another, a different, actually maybe another combine. Maybe we'll be running two combines. Don't let me do that. Seriously, I'm going to want to do it. Don't let me do that. But maybe we'll have a new combine. Seriously, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.